Hey everyone, I just wanted to do a quick video and let you know how the local community craft fair went in hopes that it might help somebody else. I know we all live in different parts of the world, but um, I just thought I'd let you know how it went. What sold, what was hot, what was not. Um, I'm in Texas. I am in a suburb just north of Houston, so it's very warm here year round. We don't have a lot of need for hats and beanies, which is what I used to make when I was in Colorado. So I made a variety of different things this time. Also, I live in a retirement area, so everybody in my immediate vicinity, which is 90 homes, we're all 55 plus. And then it was mainly, we only marketed to the surrounding neighborhoods around us, which are not 55 plus, but it was not a huge, it wasn't citywide or countywide, mainly just a community neighborhood craft fair. So keep all that in mind and then I live in a warm climate. All right, I sold quite a bit of my inventory, almost all of it. I made a lot of these hats, which is a cotton acrylic blend, Karen Cotton Cakes thinking people in Texas would like these. I had a neighbor that wanted me to make several of them and bought several of them off of me. They sold pretty well. I sold these, if they had a flower, they were 15. If they were a plain hat like this or a beanie, they were just $10. And I sold almost all my beanies. A lot of people here are from Minnesota, Iowa, so they still have family members, adult children, grandchildren, what have you, um, in those cooler climates. So sometimes they buy these for other people. Okay, um, bucket hats were all the rage this summer. So I started making bucket hats. I thought, oh, they're really cute. I made, this is a pattern that I made. I made several of these. Nobody bought a bucket hat. <laughs> they were all the rage. Now we didn't have any young people. I think they were more popular among young people. I don't know, I didn't have that many young people here. Um, I did make a few air warmers because I figure in Texas, this is about all we need. I made this one made this one. These are all tapered in the back. They're kind of neat patterns. And I made this one with a button on it. Five bucks a piece. Didn't sell any of them. Everybody was good with the prices on the hats. Nobody asked me to lower the prices or anything. I did three of these sets with spa towels and scrubbies out of cotton yarn. I sold one that was a real pretty turquoise color. Did not sell the other one that was kind of a turquoise color and did not sell the one in brown. When I was in Colorado, I made these towel holders. So you put this on your oven door, cabinet, handle, whatever you like, put your kitchen towel or you know a hand towel through it. I had this hung up in my booth with a towel in it and people would pick them up, would pick these up like this and look at them and say, what is that? When I was in Colorado, these ones that looked like paws, it could be a bear paw or a dog paw, sold like hotcakes. Not so much here. I did sell the ones I had, but I only made a couple. Nobody bought this one. I did, um, I made, hang on just a second, let me find it. I made Christmas ones and those sold really well. So the ones that had, that were red and white, had poinsettias on them, sold well. Okay, these, I made three of these, these three sold, okay? So those three sold. Um, I sold almost all my beanies except for a couple. I made these coasters. I thought these were so cute and they're all, they're out of cotton. And here in Texas, because of the humidity, your, your glasses, when you have a drink, they sweat or a can. And so you need a coaster that's absorbent or there's just a wet ring around your coaster. So I thought these would sell really well. I thought they were cute. They looked like snowflakes. Um, I made a couple of different ones. I made these and I thought that I thought made both of those and there were three in a package and they were 10 bucks. <clears throat> People didn't really even look at them. Um, I think I had a neighbor that ended up buying them from me. Then I had a neighbor that loved these. They're dog paws. They could also be coasters. You know, you can use them to set your dish soap on so that it doesn't drip everywhere, whatever. I have a neighbor that uses them to clean her dog's feet. And a couple of my neighbors went bonkers for them and said, oh, you should make a whole bunch of those. And I sold a couple of them. So my neighbors bought the rest. Then I made scrubbies. So I made two different kinds of scrubbies. I made some out of tool, these over here. And then I made some out of combination of cotton yarn 
and Scrubology yarn from Hobby Lobby. Okay, so the ones made out of tulle, I made on a small loom. They look like this, and they're great. These are the best dish scrubbies I've ever used. I have one of these in my kitchen, and they're phenomenal. And you can buy a big bag of tulle from Amazon in a variety of different pretty bright colors. I don't know, for like 20 bucks or so. Um, then I made these, which this is called a Tawashi. Um, you can look this up on YouTube. It's a crocheted type of scrubby. And you, you crochet a parallelogram, so in rows, and then when you sew it together, it makes this little swirl pattern. And it's kind of neat. So for those, I use a combination of Scrubology from Hobby Lobby, Yarn B. And then I hold it together with some kind of cotton yarn. This is Yarn B. I also like, I love this cotton. Any of the cotton yarns from Hobby Lobby are very soft. So people actually wanted them for loofahs, not for dish scrubbies. And this is soft enough to be a loofah, but has enough scrub factor to it. And, um, sorry, my, my bar dog's barking at my neighbor who's sawing outside. Sorry, my neighbor's working on his house and they're sawing over there and my dog can hear it. So I have an order for 11 of these from one of my neighbors, nine of these from another neighbor and another five. This, like I said, this is really good. This is an antibacterial type of scrubby, which means it's not going to smell if you use it for dishes. You can throw it in the dishwasher. It's very durable. I make those on a loom like this. This is a little loom you can get if you want more information. Let me know in the comments and I'll give you the link. And then this is crochet. The only bad thing about working with this yarn is it's really hard on your hands if you're crocheting with it because it's constantly going through your fingers. Whereas if it's on a loom, you're you know wrapping it around the loom and then using a loom pick to pick it over so it's not quite as hard on your hands. So I have a ton of orders. People want these for stocking stuffers. So if you're wondering what to get people for Christmas, apparently these are really popular and everybody wants these. I sold these for $2. If I do this again, uh, the bigger ones, I would probably sell these smaller ones for two and these for three because especially if it's a Tawashi and not just a loom one because they're bigger. I think I would make these bigger ones for a body type of loofah. This is obviously more for a kitchen type sponge. But I had a neighbor that bought this one and she came in and she said, this is like the best loofah ever. So some people like a really, um, you know, scrubby type of loofah on their skin. So I guess it just depends on who you are. So those were the most popular things. The only problem with that is, of course, these aren't, aren't very costly to make, which is why you only charge about three bucks for them. But um, obviously if you're selling something, you want to sell something that's 10 or $15 each because you don't have to sell as many to make a profit as you do these. The last thing that I made was uh, I crocheted some pumpkins. I made this one, which I thought was the coolest one. I tried this pattern and I really liked the way it came out. Nobody asked about it. I didn't even have, um, didn't have a price on it. Nobody asked about it, nobody wanted it. Go figure, so now it's mine. And then I had these, I made these small ones. These sold pretty well. I put a cinnamon stick in the middle of them. And if you want the pattern for those, I think I loaded it up on my Facebook page. I sold, I think I ended up making four and I sold three. Uh, there was only one that didn't sell and then my neighbor ended up taking that one. So anyway, um, I thought it was interesting what sold and what didn't sell. I made these patriotic hats, which I thought were really cool. And I thought maybe everybody would want a patriotic hat. Didn't sell a single one. And I had a knit one as well. Didn't sell a one. But that's okay because I donated, donated those to a local charity who puts packages together for veterans for Veterans Day. So it's going to a good cause. Anything, mostly I'd like to donate stuff. So I didn't really... I'm never disappointed because my whole point of crocheting is not really for anything other than therapy and to pass time and to have fun and try different patterns and things. So it's not my, it's not a source of income, that's what I'm saying. So anyway, I don't know if I'll do it again <laughs> um, anytime soon, but it was a lot of fun and I had a lot of inventory just from 
people asking me to make things for them. So anyway, that's what was hot and what was not at my local craft fair here in Texas. Hopefully this helps you. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Thanks for watching.